Before I start the master class and talk about the competition, I'd just like to give my acknowledgement. So TAFE New South Wales acknowledges Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders peoples as the traditional custodians of the land, rivers and sea. We acknowledge and pay our respect to elders past, present and emerging of all nations. Okay, so welcome to class today. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of questions, but if everybody could keep their microphones off during the masterclass. Uh, if you have any questions, please just put them in the chat box and we will do our best to answer all the questions. Um, the lesson today is going to be from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m., so it may finish a little bit early, it may go a little bit later. We'll see how the lesson progresses. So today I'm going to make a mak kimchi, which is also known as a quick cabbage kimchi or a quick kimchi. Uh, I'm also going to make a chorizo, kimchi fried rice, with a, a sort of a Korean instant noodle pangrattado, like a sort of instant noodle crumb to serve on the kimchi fried rice. And I'm also going to do a kimchi suruku jjigae, which is a silken tofu kimchi hot pot. Okay, so about the competition, uh, I'm sure you have a lot of questions. I sent to the details around lunchtime yesterday. So as a part of the competition, if you would like to join, would you please let me know today by email or text message. I just require your address and your best contact number and name and I'll send that through to the Korean Cultural Centre uh, of Australia. So for the competition, you're required to make a dish using kimchi. So the Korean Cultural Centre has been kindly sponsoring the event. They're going to send you out the free kimchi to make your dish. You'll need to produce two portions. You'll also need to supply a photo of you with the dish and a photo of your dish. You're also required to make two portions, please. Um, if you're able to do a quick one to two minute video of you making your dish, cooking your dish, uh, that would be amazing. Could all those photos and videos be emailed through to me um, at my email address? Okay, that would be excellent. Uh, but we'll talk a little bit more about the competition after that. As you can see, there's gonna be some great prizes. I just need to let someone in the lobby. Uh, Lauren in the lobby. So for first prize, it's going to be a thousand dollar voucher from Fraser and Hughes. So Fraser and Hughes is the kitchen shop based at Right Tape. So they supply all your uniforms, utensils, knives. It's a great sort of um, gift to um, partake in your career, advance your career. Just to the admins. Second prize. Second prize will be a $700 gift voucher from Fraser and Hughes. And third prize will be a $300 gift voucher from Fraser and Hughes. So all applicants' entries into the competition, you'll also receive free kimchi as well as for your competition and you'll receive a free Korean cookbook. Uh, you'll also have the chance to give feedback um, and just explain your experience to how the competition went, what you enjoyed about, you know, whether this could be the first time you're eating kimchi or cooking the kimchi, okay? Um, entries closed, we're looking to announce the winner on the 20th of October, and we're looking to have all those en the entries and photos and videos finished by the 17th, please. But as in your application for the competition, if that could be in today by 12 o'clock, that would be amazing if you can email that through to me. And then you'll have till the 17th, to make and cook your dish and get that photo through. Um, any questions, please put in the chat box. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But my Asian cookery classes, uh, my Thursday group, we can discuss that today. My Friday group, we can talk about that in class tomorrow. And my Tuesday group, we can talk about that next week in class. Okay, so a little bit of a, a change up today from our usual lesson. Uh, so first thing I'm gonna make today is actually the mak kimchi. And we're using Cabbage, also known in Korean as beiju. This is also known as wombok, and it's also now known as kimchi cabbage. Okay, so today I'm just going to do half a mak kimchi, half a cabbage. You don't want to watch me. You don't want to watch me cut kimchi all day, cut cabbage all day. So this cabbage here, I'm actually not going to wash this one. I'm going to explain why I'm not going to wash that during the process. With this cabbage kimchi, what we want to do is just cut probably about 30-40% down the cabbage. We sort of want to make a cross like that within the cabbage, okay? 
This is just so I don't break up too many of the leaves. I don't do too much damage to the actual cabbage and break up. I've actually just cut down that core, okay? Usually if you've got any outer leaves that may be wilted, or as long as they're not damaged, they can sort of be kept and you could dry them out. Um, creams usually dry up any excess cabbage leaves and they'll use them for like soups and jiggays and other hot pots, okay? So I'm just going to cut this one in half. Quite a large cabbage. So I'm actually just going to turn this into quarters. Okay. So, now the cores. You just want to take the cores out so you can break up the cabbage quite easy. Um, some recipes they throw out the cores, but I actually like to just add and slice the core into the actual kimchi. There's no need for food wastage. The core is not that enjoyable to eat, but it is nice. The longer it ferments, the tastier the core is actually going to get. You know, we don't want to use any food pot. So for the cabbage, I'm just going to cut it up probably into about that sort of thick sizes for the cabbage. You want to make sure everything is an even size. So everything salts nicely and breaks down evenly. Okay. So this muck kimchi, this quick kimchi, Priya has about 198 different kimchis. So the most famous has been the Beiju kimchi, which is the cabbage kimchi. This quick kimchi is more designed as something that is eaten fresh at the table on the day. It's okay to actually ferment this one for a couple of hours and eat fresh on the day, but it's more than welcome to sort of leave this out at room temperature. Usually I like to leave out the cabbage probably about 24 hours, but 48 hours is fine, okay? It all depends on the fermentation. You want it to start bubbling and all the liquid coming out and covering the surface. Someone may just need to let Roshan into the room. Thank you, Chef. Okay, so once all that cabbage is cut, I've got a Korean rock salt that I'm using today. So this Korean sea salt rock salt, it's a little bit, it's not as coarse as your traditional rock salt. This is a really high quality um, salt from Korea. So Korea is in the top 10 of salt consumers in the world, but they also produce some of the best actual sea salt and qualities of salt in the world. So I'm probably for half a cabbage, I've probably got about 50, about 50 to 80 grams of salt. You can see this salt's got a really nice moisture content as well. So the higher quality the salt, it's going to have more minerals, um, less sort of water content. And all I'm going to do is mix, make sure we get all that cabbage covered with the salt. And this one I'm just going to let sit at room temperature. Okay. Again, for mutt kimchi, there's not really a ratio of salt to cabbage. You just want to make sure you've added enough salt and mix it through so everything is covered with the salt. Because this one later, I'm actually going to wash it two to three times straight. So there's a reason why I don't wash the cabbage at the beginning, because I'm going to wash it three times after the salting process. Once I know the actual cabbage is ready, it's going to be quite limp, okay? It may start to become translucent, but it's still gonna have a lot of texture. So what I'm looking for with the salting, with all kimchi, all kimchi, it's a natural sort of lactic fermentation, okay? So what we're doing, all that salt is drawing out the moisture and the water from the cabbage, but we're still keeping all the vitamins, all the minerals, all the healthy benefits of the actual vegetables, okay? So I'm just going to let them sit like that. Um, 
while I wait for the other dishes. I think there's actually enough salt in there. There's a little bit of salt on the bottom. All the cabbage is nice to cover. Can I share that? Yes, of course. Thank you. Okay, so for mutt kimchi, some recipes use Korean radish, also known as mu. Um, this is one type of Korean radish. There's a couple of other different varieties, which is a smaller style of radish, but this is one of the main types used, okay? As you can see, this one was quite large. So you usually get around quite like a large football shape. This one I'm going to add to the mutt kimchi. So a lot of recipes sometimes for a mutt kimchi, like a quick kimchi, they don't add radish, but I like the texture and I like the flavour, okay? You can see here, you can usually tell how fresh the radish is if they've still kept the radish stems and the leaves attached. Okay, you can see they're quite green. There is a little bit of oxidization, a little bit of sort of um, dampness. You can see all these tops are really nice and crispy. So I've kept those on because what we do in Korean cuisine is we usually take these off and we actually air dry them, hang them out, and we can use those in soups and hot pots or we can use them in vegetable side dishes for namel. Or we could actually blanch this, which I'll probably do at home today. I'll blanch these in boiling water, squeeze out all that water, and I'll use with like a soya bean paste called twenjang, and I'll make like a hot pot with these. So it's all about using as much of the ingredient as possible. Okay. So with that radish, I've just done some batons. So I've actually just cut some of that radish into sticks. And I'm going to salt this one as well. So this one I'm going to actually add to the kimchi. This one's going to be a little bit faster to salt. Because we've got a little bit less amount. Again, we're going to have that really nice Korean sea salt. Again, I'm looking to wash the radish and the cabbage about two to three times today. If you're finding it too salty, it should have a little bit of saltiness to it, but not like the seawater. It shouldn't be an overpowering saltiness, okay? So we can probably wash it about three or four times if we're finding it too salty. Because I'm looking, we've got about two hours today, I want to add a little bit more extra salt. If I have more time to work with, during kimchi, I'm probably going to add a little bit less salt, okay? It all depends on time. But at home, usually kimchi takes about a day to make, okay? It is a, it is a long process, okay? Um, Korean traditions, they have sort of kimchi making festivals where they make all the kimchi during summer, spring. It's always usually before the middle of autumn or winter because they want to store that kimchi during summer and spring and have it ready to eat in winter, okay? So usually there'll be a large, usually called a kimjong, so quite a large Korean cabbage making festival where everyone will get involved and help make the kimchi, okay? So I'll put this to the side as well. Probably throughout the lesson, I'll mix these back and forth just to make sure everything is getting covered in salt, of course. Okay, so today I'm gonna make a different type of uh, stock. So this one's actually called myochi yuksu. So this is actually a dried anchovy stock, okay? So what I've got here is about two liters of water. I've got about 12 dried anchovies, okay? So they're called nyochi. And I've also got some dashima. Okay, so dashima, you'll most likely know it as kombu. But in Korea, they call it dashima, okay? So a couple of different types of, of kimchi, uh, sorry, of seaweed. Um, so dashima is more for our soups and our flavouring and making of our stocks, okay? Also there's kim, so kim is your roasted seasoned seaweed, okay? There are a couple of different types of the seaweed. So I've just been soaking those to get everything soft. I'll probably show you some of the dried anchovies. Because what I've done with these is I've actually taken, so they'll look like this, okay? So I've actually taken um, the guts out, and these ones are actually caught, boiled, and then they're dried out naturally, okay? So these are the little um, dried anchovies. Plenty of smell, plenty of flavor. So I'm in kitchen 10 today, so all we can smell is uh, fish sauce, yes, fish sauce, dried fish, garlic, onion, 
um, flavor towel today. We're making our kimchi and stocks. Okay? So, I'm just going to add these to a pot. The reason we take the guts out is just we want to minimize any bitterness and astringency, okay, in the cooking. Now, I've got some different ingredients to add. So you don't have to add these. Um, later today, I'm going to send through all the recipes that I've used today. So hopefully, if you, if you do enter the competition, you can actually use these recipes and work upon these recipes in the competition. So today, I've actually just got some dried shrimp. So I'm going to add about five or six of those. It's just going to add more umami, more depth of flavor to the actual stock. Um, I've just got some the white bottoms of the shallot. So I'm just going to break those up and bring out a bit of flavor. I've got some white onion. I've got some of that Korean radish as well. So that Korean radish it's going to add a nice clarity and flavor to the actual stock. So just some large chunks. I guess you can reuse the radish for later, but it's more I want to bring out a lot of that flavor in the cooking. Garlic, just break up and crush, okay? And later, I'm just going to skim everything. I'm going to bring this up to the boil first. Once it comes to the boil, again, if we boil this for too long with the anchovies and the seaweed in there, it's going to become very bitter. So I'm probably going to take the dashima, the seaweed out, um, after about 20 minutes. Another really common type of seaweed that Koreans use in a lot of cooking, especially for soups, is called miok. Okay, so miok is a thinner style of seaweed. Again, compared to like our dry roasted kim and other styles like that of seaweed. Okay, so next step, actually going to make the kimchi paste. Okay, for our mat kimchi. Okay. So. The dashima actually looks like this, so very, same as kombu, okay, so it comes in very long sheets. Um, usually the, the cheaper stuff, the cheaper dashima kombu, this one is usually farmed, harvested. There is some wild varieties of dashima that are actually sort of grown on the rocks and they're collected, they're organic and collected by hand. And they're about 10, 20 times uh, more expensive, okay, so they're going to be a little bit nicer flavour, stronger flavour because just it's a more of a slow growing of the actual Dashima kombu. That's just what it looks like, the dry version, if you've not seen before. Okay? So, for our kimchi paste, so, basically, kimchi paste, it's going to have onions, fresh chili, garlic, ginger, not too much ginger. Um, if you add too much ginger, it's going to overpower the ginger. Okay? You're going to get a very strong flavor of that ginger. You only want a light sort of flavor of the ginger. Okay? So I've got um, pear, long red chilies, I've got garlic, onion, and radish Okay, for this kimchi paste. I might need to blitz this in a couple of goes. Probably one of the hardest parts about making kimchi is not only the salting, but it's making sure you've got enough chili paste. So if you don't have enough chili paste, you're going to have a very weak sort of kimchi. Okay? So here I've got... So this is a type of fish sauce. So this is an anchovy fish sauce. Okay? So a couple of different fish sauces I use today. So this one is just like a melchi. Okay? So this is an anchovy sort of fish sauce. Quite strong in flavour. I got about probably 30 to 50 mils. Okay? Depending on who makes the kimchi, everyone's kimchi is going to be very different how they make it, okay? So usually, um, like in Seoul, it's going to be a little bit spicier. Somewhere down south, like in Busan, it's going to be a much more fishier, saltier flavor. And then up northern parts of Korea, it's going to be a little bit less spicy, okay? 
But again, it depends on um, how everyone makes their kimchi. Some people prefer a little bit less fish sauce, some people prefer more, some prefer spicier, some prefer less spicy, so it all depends, okay? So what I've got here, so this is known as seiljot. So seiljot is like a small fermented shrimp. Really strong flavor, smells like the sea. I'm going to actually use this in my kimchi today. Um, classic ingredient used in kimchi adds a lot of umami flavor and salt flavor to that kimchi. So maybe I'll just show that. Don't want to drop that. <laughs> So I'm going to add some of that. So the, the label on the jar? Is there a label? Yeah. Thank you. Very strong flavour, strong smell. They're just in a natural brine of just salt and water for those um, small balls. David, I might mute you while you uh, yes, do that. Kimchi is classified as a superfood. As you can see, it's got it's raw. A lot of it, you've got raw garlic, raw ginger, raw chili, raw onion. Okay, so a lot of different healthy ingredients in there. Again, I'm, I'm used to eating this mix and trying this mix. I guess that's not for everyone. You'll probably learn to sort of adapt the flavour and what character you're looking for. You don't want to have like a whole tablespoon, but you want to work out and make sure all the balance of flavours is there with your kimchi paste. So spicy, it's got a nice sort of fish sauce flavour to it. There's a bit of ginger, a bit of chilli, a bit of raw garlic and onion. But that ginger flavour shouldn't really be overpowering anything, okay? Okay, yeah. so I'll just move this out of the way. So I've got some cleaner bench space for you all to see. So a blend is good, okay? There's a bit of texture there, but using a Robo Coupe, it's gonna be a little bit too much texture, okay? So we wanna have sort of a nice puree paste, okay? So in there, I've got pear. Classically, 
Koreans would use um, pear, they call it pear, like it's also known as nashi pear, you might know it as nashi pear. So it's, they're very expensive pears, but they're much sweeter as a slightly different flavor than your traditional pears. But the one I use today is just a peckham. Um, you can use any other pear, like sometimes nashi pears go for about five, six dollars a pear. So it can be an expensive ingredient to add to your chili pastes, but using any pear is fine. So I've got pear, brown onion, garlic, ginger. I've got some long red chilies. I've kept the seeds in for the long red chilies, okay? Just because I want more heat. Uh, it's very important, it is spicy. It just depends on what levels, okay? Because that spiciness in the kimchi is going to give a nice sort of balance with the saltiness of the umami flavors, okay? So what I've got here, so this is called gochugaru. Okay, so gochugaru is a type of Korean chili powder. Okay, so very different to sort of, I'll just turn that down. It's a lot more coarser sort of chili powder. A little bit nuttier, a little bit of sweetness to it, but it's got a lot of spice as well. Okay. So you'll just notice my anchovy stuff came to the boil. I'm just going to turn that down to a simmer. And I'm just going to skim off all the foam and any impurities that are coming to the top. So I want a really nice clear stock. But again, I don't want this to boil away. I just want a really nice light simmer. I don't want this too bitter. This stock is only going to take about 20 to 40 minutes because there's so much flavor already in there. But again, you want to taste your stock. If you've added too much water, if it's a bit too weak, you may want to bring it back to the boil or take some water out. Okay. Just give a little bit of a simmer. Like that. Okay. Just gonna check that flavor. So good, a lot of really nice flavors developing. Can you so, just check that everyone can hear you? Yes, uh, everyone, the sound is good. So I'll just double check, no one's having any problems with sounds. Do I need to speak yeah. a little bit louder? Or do you prefer me cooking with no sound? I think most of my <laughs> students probably prefer me cooking with no sound. They're, they're a bit over online. Okay, you are young? Right. Right, okay. So, look, depends on the recipe. Some people like to blitz the gochugaru and all the other ingredients together. I'm actually just going to fold and mix everything through. So again, I've probably got about 80 to 100 grams of that gochugaru. I'm just gonna mix that through, okay? So what I like to do at home, you know, we try and make kimchi like every couple of months. Like usually we make enough kimchi for two to three months. We actually like to make a big batch of uh, kimchi paste and then keep that in the freezer. Okay, because when you go to make kimchi, if you run out of paste or don't have enough paste, it's gonna sort of slow the whole process down of making actual kimchi, okay? So you wanna make sure you've got plenty of paste ready to go. I'm gonna add some caster sugar, add the 20. So 30 grams. So again, we want a bit of sweetness, but sweetness should not be the predominant flavor, okay? It's gonna be that chili, that garlic, and those onions. Another taste. Touch more sugar. Just gonna add the rest of that. Again, my chili palette, it's getting there, slowly developing over the years. I probably can eat a little bit spicier food these days than what I, than I could before. Okay. okay. Needs a touch more fish sauce. I don't add any salt to the kimchi paste. We've already got that salted radish and that salted cabbage, so I don't want to add more salt to this. It should be salty, but it shouldn't be like inedible. Salty. 
Okay. Now, what I've got here, I made this this morning. So usually for a classical, like a beetroot kimchi, like a whole cabbage kimchi, or something a little bit larger, or other types of longer fermented kimchis, we make a rice flour roux. So you can use a rice flour or you can use a glutinous rice flour. Now this roux, it's usually about 10 grams of rice flour to about 100, 150 mils of water. Okay, so that one you just want to boil and whisk till you've got a nice roux and you want to cook out that rice flour. Okay, you want to make sure it's not too of a raw sort of rice flavor. Okay. Now, for a muck kimchi, not a lot of recipes use this rice flour roux, okay? I like to use the roux. The point of the roux is actually increases the fermentation, so it speeds up the fermentation period, okay? So you're going to have a nicer, sort of sour, bubbly sort of um, kimchi flavor, okay? It stops coming along nicely, it's not boily, just simmering away, okay? The trick is I don't want to add too much of this roux. Adding too much of this, it's going to dilute the flavour of the kimchi paste. It's not what I want. recipes that I'll send through later with what I've cooked today, again, those recipes can be adjusted. The reason I chose a lot of these dishes today is that you can sort of add your own twist or add your own ingredients or your own flavours to the actual kimchi, to the dishes made with kimchi, okay? Okay, that's great. So that's my kimchi paste done. I'm going to leave that for later, once that cabbage and those radishes are ready to be washed, okay? So what I've prepared before is I've just got some shallots. So you can never add too much raw onion to your kimchi. And I've got some garlic chives I've just cut into batons. those for later with the kimchi. So what I want to do, I just want to make sure we mix that cabbage around here and there to get everything coated. You can see already with the radish, a lot of water's come out. So again, Korean radish is very different to daikon. So daikon, which is the Japanese radish, you can see it's a lot thicker and larger, sort of football looking, while daikon is more your thinner type. The Korean radish, it's a lot, it's very versatile. You can use for pickling, for kimchi, um, for braising, for hot pots, for soups, for stocks. It takes on a lot of ingredients and has a really great texture. So you can see, that radish is already quite limp, okay? If I can sort of bend and twist and tie the radish, it's ready to wash, okay? So I just want to wash this about probably three times, okay, for the actual radish. Cabbage still has a bit to go, it's a little bit longer. Again, you want to keep checking that flavour of the stock, 
It's just ticking away nicely. Again, you could use this stock base to poach fish or poach seafood. You can make it for other hot pots or other soups. while I'm washing the radish. More than welcome to put any questions in the chat box. one more time. It is salty, but it's not too overpowering. We're going to give it one more wash, and that should be done for me with the radish. To next. This is something a little bit modern idea. Uh, instant noodles, whether it's cup noodles, um, black bean noodles, spicy kimchi noodles. Um, instant noodles are ingrained in Korean culture as well. Okay, so I'm going to make sort of like a Korean instant noodle pang gratado. So pang gratado is an Italian sort of garnish dish, so it means poor man's parmesan. I'm actually going to make it with um, Korean instant noodles today. I'm actually going to use this to garnish the fried rice. Okay? So I chose kimchi fried rice today. It's a classic sort of street food dish, but again, it's a dish that sort of everyone can cook at home. For our noodles, for the pang gratado, I've kept the spice mix in the freeze dried vegetable bag. And I've just taken out those noodles and broken them up a little bit, okay? And I'm just going to crush these up in the pestle and water. i make sure they don't go everywhere. I don't want to make a powder. I just want to break these up so they've all got a similar size and shape. So this is just adding like a textural element to the kimchi fried rice. So today I'm adding the addition of chorizo. So I'm doing a chorizo kimchi fried rice today. Again, chorizo, instant noodle pan gratado. They're not traditional or common Korean ingredients, but I'm just doing a bit of a modern contemporary version of uh, kimchi fried rice. So also known as kimchi bokkeumbap, okay? For the Korean fried rice. But again, if you're entering the competition and you would like to do like a kimchi fried rice, you could use pork belly, you could use pork neck, you could do beef skirt, um, you could do a seafood variety, you could do any variety you like, okay? That's one of the reasons why I chose that recipe today. Okay, so I'll just break those up. A little bit coarse, but not too fine.
Jersey stuff again. I'm probably going to take out that seaweed. Just because the flavour is already developed from the dashima, so I just want to take this one out, okay? Again, not boiling, just ticking away nicely. All those anchovies and yolks are starting to break up. Again, with this dashi mite, you could slice it up, julienne it, add it back to the soup, add it back to the stock, okay? Depending on what you want to do with that one. But I'm not going to throw that one out, so I can use that a little bit later. Okay, so for my... Angotada. Just going to heat up a pan, use a little bit of um, vegetable oil. I've got some butter as well. Got those freeze dried vegetables. So a classic thing, I guess a lot of Koreans like to do with like their cup noodles is add a bit of Spam, add like a poached egg, <laughs> add like some melted cheese, like whatever, whatever you like, whatever you do with the imagination, okay? I guess it's a comfort food. There's not really any health properties towards instant noodles, I don't think there's any to begin with, okay? So I just got some paper towel ready to go, I'm just going to heat this up. A little bit of shallow frying. A lot of those noodles are going to absorb the oil. Again, I don't want to burn them. So a bank potato, like traditionally an Italian cuisine, it's usually old stale breadcrumbs. So they would blitz up and then they would heat a little bit of oil and then butter and then maybe some minced garlic, a little bit of thyme. But again, this is just something um, unique. So when I was in Seoul, which feels like a lifetime ago, uh, they've got a little corner shop, it's about four seats, and they've just got wall to wall of instant noodles. We've got about 70, 80 different instant noodles, like cup noodles. And you just sit down, you grab your what noodle you want, off the shelf, and they do like a fried rice with instant noodles, okay? So they actually cook the noodles and do a fried rice with the noodles, and then they made something a little bit similar. I think this is how they made it. They put like this textural crumb, could be, they're already finished, right? They put this nice crispy crumb over the actual uh, noodles. I think it cost about three or four dollars for them. So you can add a lot of things like sausages or pork belly. You can add a lot of different ingredients. Okay? Because these are already freeze dried and dried, you've got to be careful we don't burn them. Okay? There's not really any moisture content left in there. Once I've got a little bit of colour, I'm going to add some butter. Spicy, you want it. Okay. 
Again, just be careful with this chili. It's going to get really smoky. You want to add this last. You don't want to burn that chili. So pain retard are usually served with a pasta. This is like a textual element. Out on some paper towel just so they absorb most of that butter. Smells amazing. So, again, something different you can do with instant noodles. It's good. Spicy, buttery, crispy. Okay. So I'm just going to check that cabbage again. Make sure it's getting wilted. Getting mixed together. One of the most common types of uh, kimchi, which is the Beijing kimchi, kimchis, they usually do the cabbage in quarters and they'll actually salt the cabbage in like a warm water salted brine. You could do that method as well from here and add a little bit of warm water and make sure that salt dissolves in your cabbage. But for me, this method is fine. It's actually the fastest to make at home. Okay, so most of the leaves are done. The core is getting a little bit soft, but it still needs to be softer, okay? So this will probably be the last dish I finish today, just because I want to give it enough time to do some salting. It's not too far along. You can see already there's a lot of water coming out of the cabbage from the salting. So it's a silken tofu hot pot, okay? Again, hot pots, just so you can see it's a little bit easier. Korean cooking, you'd use like a stone pot, but we're using a clay pot today, which will work great as well. Okay, so usually the jigae is it's it's just a type of spicy broth. It doesn't have to always be spicy. You could have like a soya bean jigae. Um, this one today, it's a classic sort of um, hangover food as well. So you don't have to use silken tofu. The dubu it has to have silken tofu. You can have other like other kimchi jigae's where they use a firm or they use like a medium firm tofu. Okay. But what I'm using today is silk and so forth. Now. So today I'm using a pre-bought kimchi, just so we can see the flavour, the character and the taste. So this pre-bought kimchi is already, this is another type of mutt kimchi. This one is already fermented. So it's probably about two to three weeks old. So with a kimchi, you don't want to start cooking with it until it's at least two weeks old. So whether it's fermented for two weeks, it's been in your fridge for two weeks because more flavor you're gonna get from that kimchi. If you go and use a fresh kimchi for cooking, it doesn't have that same flavor. You're not gonna extract that sort of same flavor and that same character, okay? So, got my silken tofu. 
So silken toe foot just crests less, okay? So your firm toe foot is pressed longer, medium, a little bit longer, and then silken is very delicate and soft. You can see it's already got a high water content in there. They've, once they've actually boiled the soya beans, um, pureed them up and started to press them, it's just a very short process of pressing. This one you want to add at the very end of the hot pot. If you add this one too early, okay, it's going to break apart. Okay, so you want to have like quite nice large chunks of the tofu. We've got an egg, we've got some garlic of course, and I've got some shallot tops. Okay. But with this recipe, you don't you can add as many or different ingredients as you want. If you want to do like a, like say a hemel, hemel kimchi suitable, you could add like a squid or octopus or fish, prawns, scallops. Uh, you could also do one that's more meat based. So again, you could have a beef or pork or chicken. So this recipe again, it's quite adjustable. You can sort of change a lot of different things in the recipe, okay? But I haven't chopped this up. This is already a mark pre-made kimchi. So, you know, I can tell it's already, it's already fermented. I've tasted some today. It's got a nice sourness and a nice sharpness to it. Okay? So I'm just going to heat up this clay pot. So I just want to get this simmering. That anchovy egg stock has a really nice flavor. Probably like another five minutes and it's done. Okay. So this clay pot I've just soaked overnight. Just gonna a little bit of oil. Add my garlic. Again, you could add onion, you could add some fresh chili. Up to the imagination and creativity. I don't want to just lie on the colour that garlic. Okay. Happy juice. I haven't squeezed any juice out or anything. That's all gonna add a lot of flavour. Okay? So usually if you go to a Korean restaurant or a family meal. It's a lot about sharing and Korean cuisine, okay? Rice is the center and star in the middle and then all your other dishes complement the rice. So this one will usually be served maybe on a barbecue top, maybe on a gas top, or it's gonna be in a large sharing bowl where you'll have like a ladle and then you'll serve everyone with the soup, okay? And then you wouldn't pour the soup over rice. You have the rice as a side and then you have your nice bowl of your jjigae and your soup, okay? So what I'm doing is just cooking out this cabbage, kimchi of course, might turn the heat up a touch, just don't want to burn anything too much, a little bit of colour, So if you're doing like a pork belly or pork neck or seafood, you could add your seafood or your pork or meat at the beginning and cook it out a little bit, then you could add your kimchi. Just add a little bit of shochugao. So usually if you have a um, just a suitable jjigae, a suitable jjigae it's not gonna have any kimchi in there. It's just gonna have like the chili powder, you might have some garlic, some onions. Um, if you're doing a hemel style, you're gonna have some seafood. Uh, one student just wants to enter as well. Okay. So I'm just gonna A little bit of flavour for those. Make sure there's no ingredients on the side. Okay. And so for 
me that stock is ready now. I'm just going to take some of this stock. The cheats version of straining stock. Water is fine to use. Or if you want to use a chicken stock or a beef stock. I'm using the anchovy for me, it just gives a nicer clarity, a nicer flavour. So I'm probably going to add about that much. Again, a jigge, it is a type of soup, like a hot pot. It shouldn't really be too watery or thin, but it shouldn't be too dry like a curry. Okay, it's somewhere that's sort of meeting in between. So that one I'm just going to bring to the boil and simmer down. Kimchi and the tofu are the stars of this dish. By using a stock, and if you've got a really nice kimchi, that's actually going to add a better flavour. So depending on how nice your kimchi is or how good the flavour is, that's going to give a really nice flavour to your suitable jigae. So I'm just going to leave that simmer away, low heat, just doing its thing, making sure I just soften that cabbage kimchi. It should have a little bit of bite, but it shouldn't be too crunchy, okay, for that sort of hot pot. Right. So, just double check. The cabbage. Will everyone be entering the competition today? Could I get a could I see a thumbs up? or a wave or a yes in the message box. Again, I'm here to help, of course, if you want some tips or some inspiration or some ideas. Tell them what the Fridays are again. Yes. For the new students that, that joined, the students that joined a little bit later, for the Gimchi competition, I'll just repeat the prizes because they're excellent prizes. I won't be joining the competition, unfortunately, but I'd love to. It's a $1,000 gift voucher from Fraser and Hughes, which is the kitchen and supplies shop and ride tape, so you can you definitely get some very good knives or sort of um, up the ante in your toolbox or knife roll. Second prize is $700 gift voucher, which is great. And then third prize is $300, okay? Or to use at Fraser and use. Everyone gets kimchi free from our Korean Cultural Center, Australia, and then you also get a Korean cookbook for everyone that joins. So I, I highly recommend that everybody joins that competition. And it's a really good segue before we look to start our practical classes in the near future as well, okay? So you can see the cabbage is getting a little bit limp, but there's still a bit of texture. If I can sort of bend and fold the cabbage without it breaking, that's when I know it's ready, okay? Just needs a little bit longer though, okay? Again, it's very hard to rush the kimchi. I'm just going to check this hot pot. Okay, that's nice. I'll probably just turn this in a little bit more. That will get over boiling. So, a classic sort of um, suitable jigae. They'll bring over to your table in like a little earthware or a stone yes. pot. And then they'll drop a whole egg in just before they take it to the table. So you'll have this really nice poached egg that you can sort of break up and mix with your suitable to get. Okay, it's coming along really nicely. A lot of colour, a lot of flavour. I want to make sure it doesn't reduce down too much. Vince says he wants to join. Hmm? Vince is going to Vince? Thank you, Vince. <laughs> Thank you. So, sadly, due to the, the lockdown, I won't be able to taste your dish, but we'll have four judges who will all view and have a look at your dish and see, okay? It also just gives you a really good chance to actually cook with kimchi. If you've never cooked with kimchi before, or you haven't had that inspiration um, in the past to actually try kimchi and cook some dishes 
with the cabbage kimchi. Okay? Uh, there's a, someone waiting in the lobby as well. Okay? So, just going to move this one to the back. I'm going to start on our chorizo kimchi fried rice. Smash this plate hot. I'm doing the flat rice. I'm just going to do this to the back. Nice big pan, of course. Plenty of surface area. into a container for later, okay? Now, what I might do as well, so I'm just going to add a little bit of sesame oil, just a little bit of sesame oil for flavour to that super good you get, okay? So what I've got here, I've got some of that fermented cabbage kimchi that I've chopped up, Here is some rice that I've cooked. Excuse me. I've got some rice that I cooked last night. Okay? So especially with the fried rice, it's important that you've actually cooked the rice about a day in advance and put it in the fridge and let it dry out. A really nice dry rice is perfect for your kimchi rice. Got some chorizo, which I've chopped up and diced. Got some sliced shallots, some minced garlic some more of the bottom of the green shallot, some sesame seeds, and some dolce jar. Okay? Now that rice looks a little bit different. Of course, you can just use a short grain white rice is fine. The rice mix I've got there is just something that I eat at home. So that rice mixture, it's a blend of white rice brown rice, um, your black red rice that's also got millet and sorghum in there. So I usually add a lot of different grains and different rices, not only for like flavour but also for just health as well. You know, white rice is one of the least healthiest versions of rice as we know. So, a little bit of oil, heat up the pan. Surrender this chorizo. Chorizo again, a high pork fat, pork meat sausage with a sort of smoke for You can see all that really nice coloured oil coming through now. See how much oil that fat coming out of that chorizo. Okay. Here we 
little bit of power. Again, ticking away nicely, it's not reducing too much, just boiling, just cooking out that uh, cabbage tissue. Yeah, really nice. Just add a little bit of sesame oil to it. If you want a little bit more, uh, like a stronger flavour, you could, you could caramelise the cabbage kimchi a little bit more, depending on what sort of flavour you like. Okay. Chorizo. You can get like the pre cooked chorizo, but I, today I'm just using the cured, like the cured and hung chorizo. So you can see it's a little plenty of that. That's going to get that a little bit crispy. You're going to don't want to burn the pan. I'm just going to turn that off. I want to keep all the oil in there. You know, I'm going to be careful that I burn myself. Just want to scoop. It's a good workout, this pan. It's about 15 kilos. <laughs> perfect for fried rice. See how much oil has come out from that chorizo. Okay. A little crispy, a little bit of texture. All going to add to the rice. Okay, so with that oil, just be careful because you're there's still water and moisture content in that kimchi. Okay, and make sure that we don't have any fries today. and layers of the cabbage kimchi and they'll make like a bossam, like a sum. They'll wrap the cooked pork belly like steam or braised in the kimchi and that's sort of like a thank you and a sort of celebration for how many days it took to make the kimchi. Um, in my wife's home village, I remember walking past the swimming pool about 15, about 15 meters. It was full of cabbages just soaking in a brine in the, um, in the swimming pool. Uh, I don't know how many cabbages it was. But it was uh, Maybe not work health and safety or home or HS, but there's a lot. I don't know whether they drain the pool or obviously they were using it for swimming, but it was full of salt. So a little bit I'm looking for is a little bit of colour. I want to make sure most of that moisture's come out of the kimchi. Rice. So what I've done with my rice. Is once it's cooled down in the fridge, 
suppose you like to do the same ratio of rice to kimchi. If you want it less spicy, maybe you could do two parts rice, one part of kimchi, it's up to you. What I like to do with the rice, once it's cooled down, is you add a little bit more sesame oil. What kind of rice have you used? This one, the rice is a blend of white rice, uh, brown rice, red rice, or red or black rice, and it's also got millet and sovereign. So usually this type of rice is called um, obukbak, so it translates to five grain rice, but especially like a palace food or royalty food, um, back in royalty times or different dynasties in Korea, you could have up to ten different grains in your rice, okay? So sometimes at home I'll have like even chickpeas or soya beans. I also have, uh, what else do I use? Oats. Sometimes use oats in my rice grain mixtures. As I mentioned before, millet, sovereign. Um, you can add sticky rice sometimes as well. So it all just adds flavour. Not only it's good for you, definitely makes you regular, um, but just flavour, texture. <laughs> Korean supermarkets they'll actually sell the five to six even up to ten they'll sell actually the grain mixture so Korean supermarkets will sell that pre-made grain mixture um, and then they'll serve their different um, sell their different rices as well a lot that come from Korea and then others that may come from China or America but they're grown by Korean farmers and you can usually pre-add pre-mix those grain mixtures Can you just say to Vince, bad luck, we've got three entries now. Oh, bad. There's three people in Unfortunately, we've got three, we've got three entries now, unfortunately, Vince. But still, three entries. That's... You're all excellent cooks. I've seen you all cooking in class and pictures you sent through, so I really recommend everybody to. Vince is <laughs> I believe in you, Vince. But good luck. Good luck, everybody. So. Now, Korean fried rice, like kimchi bokum, it's a little bit different to sort of your Chinese or Cantonese fried rice. It's got a higher moisture content. So usually, uh, shirizo. So I'm just saying that shirizo. So usually it's going to be, it's not going to be a really sort of drier style like that you would have in um, Chinese or Cantonese cooking. There is going to be a little bit of moisture because you've got um, that cabbage kimchi in there. Okay? So I just added a little bit of sesame oil. I'm just going to check that flavor. The main thing is you want, you don't want any of that rice sticking to the bottom and you want a really nice color and everything coated in that kimchi. spicy. Might have a little bit of gochujang as well. So gochujang, again it's a chili paste, so it's a fermented chili paste and that's made with sort of wheat. Uh, sometimes they'll add a bit of barley as well and it's usually a chili puree that they ferment. So I'm just going to add that to give a little bit more You could add more gochujang, more chili pepper. So I'm pretty happy with that. Again, shrizo being a pork product, it works really well with the kimchi fried rice. Yes. 
62 degree egg on top. Again, there'll be a little bit more moisture content, which is fine. I'm going to add some just for a bit of bite. Some of the shallot. Sesame seeds, of course, and I've got that instant noodle pangratado with some texture. So usually at home, if I make this, I usually have some kim, so some roasted and seasoned seaweed, and usually you would wrap or you'd mix that fried egg or that poached egg, and you'd mix it through the sort of kimchi fried rice. And that's what you'd have done ready to go. So really fast. Again, like with all our fried rices that we make in class, have all your pan plan ready to go or your wok clock. And it's a very, very quick and fast dish to cook and make. Okay. This cabbage is nearly ready. It's getting quite limp. Still translucent. I can still bend and mix this sort of cabbage. Just going to leave that over here for a second. I'm just going to bring over our... So I can see now that ginchis become softer. Still a little bit of water content in there. You got a nice mix of cabbage, some of that shallot. Again, I really like this one with seafood, like if you've got prawns or some squid. Perfect. Okay. So, do the tofu. Just going to be careful opening this up. Let's see how much pressure there is. <laughs> how much is that? So what I'm going to do is just sort of, just sort of break that up. take it straight from the bag into the hot pot. If you try and put it on the board or put it in a bowl, it's just going to make more mess and spill out everywhere. Just have a little bit of chili flakes. 
with a little bit more colour, a little bit of spice. No more, no longer than five minutes really for that silky tofu on top. See how that steam for a little bit. It's just going to be really hard to eat if you mix that all about. Okay. So while that's cooking away. Pretty much I think our uh, cabbage is done. See a lot of water's come out. I can sort of bend and twist that cabbage a little bit more. Salting is pretty good, okay? Now, now I'm gonna wash this about three to four times depending on the saltiness. Always the leaves are going to be the most saltiest, so we wanna make sure we give a really nice wash and rinse things all together. Was there any questions while I'm uh, washing? My cabbage. Gagan says he feels like coming and eating it. Because that's it. Gagan. I think we all miss. Will the recipes being... be available for students? Yes, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So the recipes I'll attach into the chat box, or I can email them to you, or I can put in our Teams group. It'll be no problem at all. Uh, Korean Cultural Centre's been. Lovely again, they've sent me some kimchi recipes as well, so I'll forward those recipes to you all as well. Uh, when we come back to practical classes, I'll have some printed off as well, okay? For you to use in your home cooking. Okay, so. So I wash the cabbage about two to three times and just checking the saltiness each time I wash it. Where can they get details of the competition? Details of the competition were all in the email I sent yesterday afternoon. So yesterday afternoon, all the details were in that email and it was with the Microsoft Teams link, okay? So, if people, chefs, students that want to enter, could you please email me your address and your best contact number, and I'll send that through to the Korean Cultural Centre, so they're based in Sydney. If we could try to have them all in by 12 o'clock today, that would be amazing. I know it's a little bit short notice, being 12 o'clock today, but it's just so we can send out and post the kimchi. So you're going to get sent cabbage kimchi for your cooking lesson, or sorry, for your competition, to cook your dish. So your kimchi will be supplied by the Korean Cultural Center. And then you'll have till the 17th. You'll have to the 17th of October to make your dish. It can be traditional, it can be classic, it can be modern, it can be contemporary. Um, you can blend it with different cuisines, there's no problem at all. We just want to see your imagination, your creativity, your skills. You'll have to the 17th. So by the 17th, you will need to send in a recipe, like a recipe of your dish, a photo of your dish, and a photo of you holding or with your dish, okay? If you want to do a short video, you're more than welcome to do a quick little video and email that through to me. But everything will be emailed to me and then that'll get passed on to the judges. I'll organize another Microsoft Teams invite for all of the students that entered and then we're gonna announce the winners on the 20th, which is the Wednesday, okay? So I'll make sure I organize all of that. And again, you've got those three great prizes. But everyone that enters gets uh, free kimchi again, and you get a free Korean cookbook, okay? But we just want two portions of a dish using kimchi. So it has to have cabbage kimchi in there, okay? That's <laughs> number one. If you saw in the email I sent yesterday, there was an attachment. Now that attachment is the marking criteria. So click on the attachment in the email I sent yesterday. It's just a Microsoft Word document. That document will have what you're being marked from. As you can see, there's no taste because we won't be able to taste it, unfortunately. But you'll have all your criteria in there for the competition, what the judges will be marking you on. 
So that's washed twice, but still pretty salty. So I'll probably wash this one again while I'm checking my hot pot. It's so they have to use the kimchi they get sent. Yes, They yes. don't have to make the kimchi. No, you won't need to make the kimchi. So you'll be supplied with pre-made mutt kimchi, so it's already fermented chopped kimchi. giving us a really good wash. Again, because we wanted to speed up the process, I've added a bit more salt, which means we just need to wash it a little bit more. And you can see with all this washing, that's why I don't wash the cabbage beforehand. Again, it's using a lot of water, so there's no need to wash that cabbage um, when you're already going to be washing it three to four times in that water, okay? Two questions. Do yes. they get posted, the kimchi? Yes, they get posted, yes. Right. Yeah. And Leanne has asked, uh, two portions, is there any weight required? No, I think two portions, like two, two serves, two serves. It can be a main, it can be an entree, it can be an appetizer or a snack. Um, dessert may be interesting. I'm not seeing a lot of dessert in the kimchi, but... You never you feel, know. If you, yeah, if you feel like you could create a dessert with kimchi, Okay, so that's a third washing. Probably once more. <laughs> a lot of washing, a lot of soaking and salting and washing. Now, how do you know your ginch is ready to put into the fridge? So ideally you want room temperature, okay? So ideally you want like 15 to 18 degrees, somewhere where it's that temperature in your home. You can put it in, I usually recommend like maybe a glass lock and lid container. If you are gonna use a plastic container, make sure that plastic container will only ever be used for kimchi because the kimchi will stay in the container. It will, you will not get, it's like chocolate and wine, red wine. It's very hard to get kimchi stains out Try to avoid getting any kimchi stains on my chef uniform. They're very hard to get out, okay? So you could use um, like a glass sealed container. Some people like to use the glass kilner jars. You can use that's fine. What will happen is while all that fermentation is happening, like if you've got the salt, the fish sauce, the chili, the garlic, the ginger, all those raw ingredients are interacting with the bacteria and they're feeding on the sugars. You're going to have a nice, clear liquid form to the top. Okay, and that's when you know the kimchi is ready to put in the fridge. That liquid that forms on the top, that's going to keep all the bad bacteria out. We're looking for healthy, good bacteria. So all the bad bacteria found in the air. Okay, so one last wash. That will be it. Pretty happy with that. It does have to be a little bit salty. So especially when you go to ferment it, if it's not salty enough, your kimchi is going to be very plain. yourself from mixing it. What I'm going to do now is going to drop an egg in. So usually they'll have a boiling and bubbling away in a restaurant. I'll bring that out to you when it's ready.
use it will bring that bubbling and cooking over. You can see that's still bubbling and boiling away. And what you would do at the table is I guess you would want to mix that egg. And you can see you've got just those nice soft tofu there with all the kimchi. Perfect with rice. Okay, nice little hot pot. But again, this is a dish. If you want to add seafood or different proteins, it's great. You don't even, of course, you want your dishes to have kimchi, but classically, the suitable jigae doesn't have any kimchi in there. But you can make one like a kimchi suitable jigae. Okay? Okay. So, the kimchi. So, I've strained most of that water off. Washed about four times. Are those the only two dishes you're making, Chef? Yes, yes. Add the radish. So one I've done is a very classical, traditional dish, and then one is modern. So we're adding chorizo, the, the pan Okay? So, four, my kimchi. And my garlic chives. And shallots. This stage you'll want to get a glove on. You don't want to stain your hands. So this is My kimchi paste. <laughs> okay, so there's the kimchi paste. I'm gonna add this. I just add a bit to start. Okay. Just gonna dive in. Usually, if you're doing like the classical whole beetroot kimchi, that one takes a, probably at least a week or ten days before you can eat it. This one is something we can sort of have as a snack and eat it straight away. You can see I've got heaps of paste left. That's actually what we want. We definitely don't want to be short on our chili paste. Just want to be able to coat on that. So usually when you're seasoning making your kimchi, there'll be someone standing there with all the other condiments and you'll be doing the mixing and tasting and someone will be usually adding everything as you go. It's all about seasoning the taste. As we talk about in class, like balance of flavors, seasoning the taste. Recipes, they're not set in stone, they're just a guideline. They're just, a, I guess, a map to get you on your track, but you can add a lot of different things. Some people don't add shallots, some don't add garlic chives. It all depends. So. Salty's there, chilies there, onion, you know, we've got the raw garlic chives, raw shallot, a little bit more sugar. It's not a dessert, just for balance. Um, again, especially a lot of Korean restaurants in Australia, the, the, the kimchi is probably a little bit sweeter. Like a lot of Asian food in Australia, it's going to be a little bit sweeter than maybe what you find um, in the country of origin, but it depends on the restaurant as well. Especially somewhere like, I guess, the bigger cities like Sydney and Melbourne, they definitely you know, have more of a palate for Asian food or for spice or authenticity. But I don't want to have my kimchi too sweet. I just want to have a nice balance um, of flavours in there. My wife would prefer this to be spicier, but I'm quite happy with the spice content. It's about 10 times compared to mine. So I just want to check that again. And then this one you can just serve at the table ready to eat as a side dish or I would put this into a container and pack and press it all down just so we can cover all that with the liquid, okay? okay. Let's 
So for me, the radish just gives a really nice texture as well. That's it. That's the kimchi done. our three dishes. So a kimchi, like a mak kimchi, cooked from scratch and made like very quickly and something we can eat at the table. Again, I wanted to show you the roux method. Sometimes with a mak kimchi they wouldn't use a roux, but I think it's an interesting component to add in a kimchi to make that fermentation faster. Okay. Um, again, the two dishes, making a stock, it's going to give you some ideas of what stocks you can make or how you can incorporate a stock into a kimchi dish. Doing something like a hot pot it gives you a lot of choice to add different ingredients, uh, different textures and different flavours with the cabbage kimchi. And again, something like a fried rice works really well. Is, so the, is the competition only open to Asian cookery students? It is. So only, so all my Asian cookery students, so my Friday class, my Thursday class and my Tuesday class. And, and then also, yeah, yeah. And choice. And the choice groups, of course. So the full-time classes, you'll have choice as your teacher as well. So. Yes, but only for Asian cookery students. Was there any questions about the competition or about any of the dishes? Again, the recipes I'll make sure I share.